Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the Harness Racing Alumni Show. I'm Freddie Hudson, and I'm here today with Trade Martin and Bob Marks. The Harness Racing Alumni Show, with your host, Freddie Hudson and Trade Martin. This week's alumni show is brought to you by Long Island's Century 21 American Homes Associate Broker, Joe Rico. If you're buying or selling your home, Joe Rico is your go-to guy. Joe has been representing buyers and sellers on Long Island for 30 years. He is an expert in all types of sales. Don't sell for average. Call or text Joe Rico today at 516-524-4870. That's Joe Rico at 516-524-4870. This week's guest is Eric Powder of the international podcast, The Horseman's Voice. Eric, welcome on our show. I appreciate the opportunity and look forward to our little discussion, gentlemen. It's great to have you. Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself and the horseman's voice. I was introduced to horses, obviously, as a little kid, you know, on a pony and little fairs and, you know, carnivals around and just fell in love with animals. We bred dogs, three litters of full-bred champion boxers, and, uh, you know, the age of seven or eight, I was introduced to thoroughbreds, and then my father got into owning, you know, obviously my grandfather and just everything to him. You know, at the age of 12, I was helping out with horses with different trainers and then through the years, you know, meeting different people. And through the years, I honestly just kept my mouth shut. I was told to keep my mouth shut and just learn and listen and went to a Midwestern Ivy League school, Bradley, and learned everything I know from a lot of different instructors, specifically a Dr. Kapersky, who's one of my big mentors. And here we are today. And the horseman's voice, how did you start that? (laughs) It's kind of funny. You know, I mean, you guys run a media outlet, and there's a lot of editing involved. I did a piece for Trot Magazine, and I wasn't really sure how they worked with editing and payment and what have you, and they were waiting for an invoice. And then when I saw the piece come out, it was on Taser Gun, the fastest horse out of the gate, Andy Miller, and they edited the piece, and I wasn't too happy with that. So I just decided, you know what? Let's just go for it. And I just started this little publication, a little trifold that was photocopied by myself and folded and dropped off at the racetracks in Chicago and then started getting people's email addresses one by one, very grassroots. Started a podcast with something called Clickcaster and then the numbers just blew up. It just exploded. And then just decided to step away for a while, you know, do the things going on in Chicagoland and took a break for approximately 10 years on and off coming back to big stake races. And now I've shifted out of that. And I'm just completely focused right now into the horseman's voice, just interviewing people from all over the world, just like I, how you guys do. What countries do you cover? Right now, um, I'm just expanding, I guess, into different demographics in the States. But I'm looking towards, obviously, the Scandinavian area, specifically Norska, Svenska, Finland. We were talking before we started here. And other concentrated areas in Europe. We've just started, obviously, with Australia and New Zealand due to relations with John Curtin with Harness Link. We're looking forward to his website being redone. His mobile apps look really good, but he wants to do the website over. Relations there are awesome. You guys have relations with them. I think it's all about collaboration. I think it's all yeah, about much every relationships <laughs> with uh, John Kirk. I've been close with him forever. So, uh, good man. My question would be, when you're doing a podcast in the Scandinavian nations, will it be in the local language? I'm going to try my best because I studied linguistics at Bradley University and I taught English in Japan for two years. So with the clarity of my voice and slowing it down, people can understand me in different languages. So I'll try my best to use translation, Google translation or other translation you know, software to speak at these people's level to promote in their country. It might be difficult for people stateside and other English-speaking countries to understand, but you're asking those hard questions. You're asking those grassroots questions to these people in their language that they might have never been asked. Eric, how is racing different in Europe than it is here in the United States? From what I've seen and experienced, I think it's more crowd-centric. The marketing is a lot more focused. They know their demographic. It's a smaller demographic, so they can concentrate their efforts. They have a lot of you know, big sponsors. It's very continual, and people can relate more. There's a lot more marketing of the drivers and the trainers and the grooms. People can relate to them, you know, like Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl and all these different people playing in these different games and different sports, from baseball to football and basketball. People can relate to that, and I don't see that here in the States, and I think that's something we need to tap into and get back to that grassroots level. 
you just answered my next question. I was going to say, uh, what do you think North American harness racing should copy from European racing and apply it over here? <laughs> so you just answered that one. <laughs> well, I think there was too many tracks and too many dates. That was said by a driver in Canada. Now everything's becoming more concentrated. And again, I think a lot of these racetracks are missing the point. Demographics are changing. They need to focus more into the Latino markets. They need to focus more into the African-American and Central American and you know, Caribbean. Racing has become more international. The information age, people are using their computers, their mobile devices. And if they're exposed to racing, you know, they'll watch the races and they might wager. And that increases the handle. I mean, look at the handles in Tokyo, Japan. Look at the handles in Han at Hanshin Racecourse, where I was based in Osaka. I mean, these handles in a wind pool is multi-millions of dollars every single day. Look at the pools in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is so integrity-based that everybody's betting like 10 cent and 20 cent bets on their mobile devices. And look at those pools. And look at the purses. Absolutely. It all comes down to relationships. It all comes down to collaboration. Everybody needs to work together. Everybody needs to promote each other. It's not about ad revenue. It's about our love of the sport. And everybody knows that. We all love horses. As another woman had said, the horses bring us together. If the horses weren't there, we wouldn't be talking today, guys. We wouldn't. Correct. Hey, Eric, I hear you have a special guest coming on your show on uh, February 22nd. Do you want to tell people who that is? Uh, I think I just heard his voice, and I can't wait to hear his history. <laughs> yeah, Eric's guest will be Freddie Hudson from the Harness Racing Alumni Show. Showing, I guess, the legislators what the real heart of our sport is. It's very different from other breeds. It's very different from thoroughbreds and quarter horses. It's very family-oriented, and, you know, what a perfect guy, Freddie. I mean, what you guys are all doing. I mean, it, it just all comes down to relationships, and we just have to promote it, and we have to show these legislators, look, you know, it's a family sport, multi-generational, and we just need to work together and come to a resolution. Before my last question, a word from our sponsor. Bill Houghton, insurance standards and farms for over 40 years. 954-655-5547. That's the number you call for all equine insurance. Bill knows the ins and outs of equine insurance. With this year's new increased online bidding and new protocols in place, make sure your equine investments are protected. Call or text Bill at 954-655-5547. That's 954-655-5547. Call Bill now. Okay, we're back. One of the things that I found out lobbying in Washington, D.C. was I'd go into the meetings and I'd say, well, I'm from the harness racing industry and, you know, we need to support this bill or we need to support that bill. And finally, you know, I've been doing this, like, I've been to about you know, 50, 60 meetings, and the person stopped me and said, can you please tell me what harness racing is? I mean, it's just all about them just getting the word out. And if the more we educate these people and you get these people sitting behind a horse, it's at the county fair or even at a paramutual racetrack, once they grab those lines, they're hooked like we were. And we are. I mean, once you grab those lines, you know, like, hey, I can jog a horse. And once they become more educated, then they understand the day-to-day -day grind that people are going through every single day, four seasons of the year. Yep, and that's what, one of the things that we have. We can throw our owners behind the horses, and it's a hands-on business. We tried yeah. to do that when Mal Burroughs gave his great speech, basically, which I wrote for him. What we were talking about at the time was infomercials illustrating the fact that you can't go one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan. You can't pitch to Hank Aaron, fight with Mike Tyson. You can't even ride your own thoroughbred. However, the theme was you can be involved with your own standard bread. We tried this back after Malabar Man when he won the uh, Hamiltonian. You know, Mal Burroughs was the only amateur driver, well, not the only, the second amateur driver to win the Hamiltonian. We tried it's that funny. way back then, and it was just completely ignored. You mentioned the Hamiltonian. I mean, I was welcomed out to the Hamiltonian, shout out to Moira Fanning, and we had George Foreman up in the press conference, and I had met him in, I think, George the Fifth. He's got George and Georgina as his kids. You know, they're having his press conference, and everybody in the media room is smiling, and they're all excited, and I'm talking to him like a horseman. And he's joking around saying, you know, I don't want to tell you how many horses I have because I might get in trouble with my wife. But getting to these guys to our level, like a Sam Bowie and these hockey players that Anthony McDonald's working with in Canada, they just want to be everyday people, and they've got that competitive edge, and they just want to just sit behind a horse like everybody else. That's been done for years. It's a good idea. Like I said, we tried it, but basically at the time, 
they were more inclined, I mean, the idiotic industry was more inclined to go with that American, whatever the hell it was, that Barry Washboard came out with, where we were putting horse racing on ESPN. And of course, the first show that we did featured three-year-old trotting fillies, and we had four races. And of course, in each race, half of the field broke. I mean, that's a hell of a debut for a television show. It didn't work. You know, it just didn't work. Basically, I really like your idea of getting celebrities involved. It works. I agree. And with that, I'm going to have to close the show out right now. Uh, well, I think we've been closed out. Okay. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for being on our show. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, gentlemen, and look forward to February 22nd with you, Freddie, and all the best to you guys. Special thanks to show sponsors, Joe Rico Century 21, Bill Houghton Equine Insurance. This is Freddie Hudson, and that's a wrap for this week's show. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to tune in next week. The Harness Racing Alumni Show. 